This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. I'm at the Great Wall of China, outside of Beijing, and after climbing all that way up here, I can tell you it's an amazing experience, and I certainly understand why this is one of the seven wonders of the world. But I'm in China to do some awesome wildlife adventure, so I'm gonna head over to the Beijing Zoo and meet up with a friend of mine and see what we can find. The Beijing Zoo was actually founded by the emperor in 1906, and believe it or not, until 1949, it was only open to the emperor and the people he wanted here it was not open to the public. Think about that. For over 40 years, this entire zoo was here specifically for the emperor and the people that he invited to this thing. Since then, it has exploded, and nearly 10 million people a year visit this zoo. To put that in perspective, zoos like the San Diego Zoo and the Columbus Zoo in America typically don't even do three million visitors, or maybe just over three million. So, of course, there's tons of people in China, but this zoo is certainly loved by the people of China. So we're in the educational center here at the Beijing Zoo. And again, this is all those kind of smaller animals, some small mammals and other reptiles and amphibians that are kind of cool. And this is really where the education starts. People come in, they learn about the animals, they hopefully start to love them, and that's where conservation really starts. So we're gonna go behind the scenes and check some cool stuff out. Hopefully you guys will learn right along with me. One of the critters that they have back here on the educational show are these tokay geckos. And as you can see, it's got that common threat display where it just wants to bite you. Uh, I tell you what, tokay geckos are some of the most beautiful geckos and a very sizable gecko too from Southeast Asia. But unfortunately, because of their kind of cantankerous attitude, they're not the best of the pets. But a lot of people are starting to captive breed these guys now and they're doing pretty well at taming them down. But uh, I tell you what, when I was young and in a pet shop, I used get bit by these guys all the time and they clamp down they roll their eyes in and they will not let go but if these guys were as tame as say a leopard gecko with that color and pattern holy cow would these things be cool but nevertheless people see something this awesome and they want to learn more about it and that's what this educational center is all about all right, so look what we found here back here. This is actually a Brazilian rainbow boa, obviously. I work with a lot of these guys, but this little one here has a pretty nasty attitude. You can see it's just kind of tightening up on me right now, and it, uh, it wants to take a pop at me if it possibly can. But fortunately, it's still a beautiful snake, and when people see something that's beautiful, they don't have to necessarily touch it to really fall in love with it. They can just see the beauty of a snake like this, and it gets them inquisitive about how incredible they are, and then you can educate them about it but I'm gonna put this girl back down before she takes a shot at me because you can see she is totally keying in on my hands she's tightening up she wants to hit me so let's see if we can get her back without getting bit guys I really came across something that I love that is amazing to me and these are Tatar sand boas now you see these rarely in our trade but I'll be honest with you I don't think I've ever actually even handled any of these guys these are a Central Asian animal that range into Western China and the thing that's interesting about the Tatar sand boas is the fact that they hibernate for long periods of time they'll typically cool down from the end of September all the way through May I mean they just basically chill out that entire time and of course, just like a lot of the sand boas, they don't drink any water, they don't bathe or anything like that. They're gonna get all their moisture just from their prey. And of course, this particular sand boa is a live bear, much like most of the sand boas, but there are a couple species that are actually egg layers, but these ones aren't. But like I said, it's just really interesting that uh, I've kind of seen pictures of these guys from time to time, but this is the very first time that I've actually ever handled a Tatar sand boa. And man, they are unbelievably gorgeous, much prettier than I ever expected. It's almost like a cross between a few different species, maybe an Argentine rainbow boa, uh, you know, a John Eye, a rough scale sand boa. I don't even know, but man, these things are super cool. <laughs> This 
this is actually all bags of salt so that they can actually use it for the marine fish, which is pretty interesting. You always wonder where the salt is coming from. Well, that's where it's coming from with the aquarium here. Pretty cool. So this is the quarantine area behind the scenes at the Beijing Aquarium. This is where they have all the stuff that's either on quarantine or breeding. Of course, these things here are super cool. These are puffer fish, which are really awesome. Look at those little guys right there. That is a neat little fish. Beijing Aquarium's Jellyfish Breeding Center. And essentially, they're breeding up to 30 species of jellyfish. Now, the reason for that is a couple things. Number one, they need to continue to replenish their stock out on the field because they only last about four to six months. That's the only lifespan of them. And of course, these are very rare, some of them, so there's no way they can get other ones unless they're actually breeding them. They also have some conservation projects going, so this is actually a really cool setup. I've never seen a jellyfish breeding facility before, but this is truly amazing. So it's pretty cool here at the aquarium. In 2015, they started keeping some reptiles, basically as an outreach type of thing. And of course, this albino Burmese python here is really awesome. During the summer camps, kids can come in and actually get up close and pet this albino Burmese python, which is really cool. So as the uh, expansion of education into reptiles goes here at the aquarium, they'll be able to keep more and more uh, reptiles, which is really cool. And of course, the leader here is taking care of all that. So that's really great. Thank you so much. Guys, I have seen a lot of really crazy cool animals in my day, but to be able to hold this animal right now is absolutely insane. Of course, this is a Chinese giant salamander, but a one of a kind. It's actually a leucistic or a pied or some sort of lacking pigment animal. This is incredible. To be able to hold an animal like a giant Chinese salamander, but then to have a color mutation on top of it, Oh my God, I am absolutely dying right now. And again, this is the largest amphibian in the world. So it's gonna get about three or four times this size when it gets older. Take a look at that guy right there. I tell you what, I just showed you guys that leucistic over in the other place. I wanted to show you what a wild giant salamander is. And this one is peeing like crazy on me. But you know, I never imagined when I was a kid that I would be holding something like this. When I was out nuding and salamandering, I saw pictures of these guys and I just dreamt about them. And here I am all these years later and actually able to hold one. This is a dream come true. Literally, I think one of the coolest animals on the planet. Take a look at this guy here. I tell you what, I'm kind of always freaked out by things that kind of look like bugs or spiders, but this thing is actually pretty cool. This is a coconut crab, and of course, these guys have amazing strength and pinchers. They literally can break coconuts with their pinchers. That's how strong they are. So you can see right now, he's just latched onto my glove, and I tell you, he is not gonna let go. If this was my finger, oh my gosh, it'd be so much pain, they could even break a finger. But again, just take a look at how amazing that guy is, but very aggressive. Even over here, it wants to continue to pull at me. So uh, definitely a really aggressive crab species, but uh, super, super cool just to interact with something like this. Archer fish are pretty interesting. They're actually, these guys right here, and they will actually spit water at their prey to knock it down, and that's how they actually get it. And we're gonna have one of the keepers go get some food for us so that we can actually see the archer spit it down. It's gonna be pretty cool.
All right, guys, so that was the aquarium. Some really cool stuff in there, but I'm super excited because we're heading over to the panda exhibit, and rumor has it, we're gonna get a chance to actually feed some great pandas. No, I'm looking forward to that one. literally been a lifelong dream of mine to get close to a panda. I mean, certainly an iconic animal and certainly one that is endangered very much. Take a look at this animal right here. There's only about, there you go, buddy. <laughs> There's only about 2,000 pandas left in the wild and only about 300 of them in captivity. Believe it or not, only about 40 of them are outside the country of China. But yet the government of China controls all of the ones that are even outside this country. And <laughs> these guys are from the uh, southern part of China, basically in the Sichuan area. But because of farming, a lot of them have been pushed out of the areas that they actually were endemic to. And that's one of the reasons why they get, got into kind of a critically endangered position. The good news is, is that recent surveys say that possibly some of these guys have actually rebounded a little bit and there's a slight increase <laughs> in the population in the wild. Now, 99% of the diet in the wild are gonna be bamboo shoots, uh, although they will eat some rodents and even some fish in the wild, but uh, these guys just look absolutely cute and cuddly, but you gotta keep in mind that they are bears, and uh, although I'm pretty close to it, and it's certainly acting really good, uh, if I get my hand too far in here, you never know what's gonna happen, so uh, we'll go ahead and, and keep our distance, but my gosh, is that the cutest thing? Come on, buddy. Oh. <laughs> my gosh, guys, that is like literally a life dream of mine to do this with a panda. Wow, how awesome is that? Of course, this is an Aldalbra tortoise, one of the largest tortoises in the world, really second only to the Galapagos Island. And there's some people that actually believe that Aldalbras can get as large as Galapagos Island tortoise. This guy is actually a male and he's 30 years old. And uh, the thing that's so amazing about these tortoises is their personality. Uh, these guys aren't timid like a lot of tortoises. As you can see, they love to be petted. They're really great about interaction. This is the first tortoise I've actually been able to give a handshake to, which I think is pretty awesome. But of course, these guys will live a long, long time. There's uh, been records of captivity of over 150 years and caught as adults. So who knows how old they actually were. And of course, this is very similar to like a parallel evolution between the Galapagos Island tortoises they're truly living dinosaurs and I tell you they're such cool animals now what's interesting is that these guys do need some areas to climb and so on like that because they they can actually get problems with their paws if they don't and uh, this guy looks really beautiful you don't see any real pyramiding on it or anything it's really something else and he is certainly an extremely personable animal uh, and uh, as you can see, I've never seen one that will actually come up like this. Oh, look at that. This guy is just absolutely crazy. Oh, yes, you want it. Come on, give me, give me that paw again. Oh, you want to go the other side, huh? <laughs> and you got to definitely be careful with those chompers because that guy's got quite the jaw power. Now these guys don't actually reach sexual maturity till they're well into their 20s. So he's 30 years old and you think, oh, he's getting kind of old. But the truth is he's about at that age when now he'd be ready to breed for the very first time. Um, it's a shame that some of these areas that these animals are from are being protected very, very well. So they're not, they're, they're, there's a population of them that is pretty secure. But of course, outside of that population, uh, they would definitely be in trouble. And the Galapagos Islands in particular are doing a tremendous job of conservation with these guys. 
Just look at how beautiful that is. Man, that is adorable. Alan, the head reptile keeper here at the Shanghai Zoo Reptile House, really loves his boas, and this is one of his personal projects. And I tell you what, it is absolutely stunning. Of course, this is a jungle salmon boa, but typically jungles have some striping. This one is striped. Look at that, almost head to tail, and just such a wide striping like that. Now the hypo or salmon, of course, is a co-dominant animal, and there is a super form, and the jungle is also co-dominant. This is gonna make for some beautiful animals, and he's breeding them into things like sun glows and albinos, which are gonna make for some really stunning babies. But just take a look at that stripe. Whew, that boa is absolutely ridiculous. I've always really loved these guys. Of course, these are the Chinese crocodile lizard or Shinosaurus. Now these are really a semi-aquatic animal, so they'll spend a tremendous amount of time in the water. And these guys will range from Southern China all the way to Northern Vietnam. And they just are so unusual because they literally are like a crocodile with their little uh, bumps all over them. And, it's just really bizarre, but then they are actually a lizard. Uh, and of course, these guys will actually have live birth, which is really interesting. And they have a really powerful jaw. They eat snails and crack the shells. And uh, in captivity now, some people are breeding these pretty commonly now, and they're doing extremely well. Uh, in the early days when the Shinosaurus came in, they didn't do well at all and had a high mortality rate. But as you can see, these things are just absolutely adorable. And of course, in the wild, you can see this is exactly what they do. When people walk by them, they just stick to them. As a matter of fact, in certain provinces, they call these the stone lizard because literally they just freeze like stones and that's their defense mechanism. But certainly one of the most unusual of all the lizards. These are absolutely one of the most incredible looking turtles in the world. These are, of course, the Indo-Chinese box turtle, sometimes called the flowerback turtle in China. Now these are absolutely critically endangered and very, very few animals are still in the wild. I'm just floored at the fact that it almost looks like a piece of art. I mean, it's crazy. It's almost like it's carved out of some exotic wood. So beautiful. And unfortunately, they have a very timid and shy nature. So they're not radically bred in captivity because they typically don't thrive in captivity as well. So hopefully, some of the people that are truly turtle experts will really take up the mantle and continue to work with this project. I know a few tortoise and turtle breeders now that are working with them with some so let's hope that in the future, there'll be a captive breeding program to save these guys from being completely extinct.